guys, it's Sarah here. Um, today I'm just doing a really quick, um, I think it took me 30 minute little wee daily painting of a um, sort of a, a dusk scene with some balloons and um, uh, some just foreground trees and things. It's really quite an easy little wee one. I'm using the Atelier Interactive Paints, which I, um, I really like. Generally, I sort of tend to use a, a warmer and a cooler red and um, a uh, sort of warmer and a cooler yellow, black and white. And um, sometimes I add in one or two other colors depending on um, what I'm doing. Um, I've got, obviously, I've got a little bit of um, a ultramarine blue actually at the top as well. Um, I think I still have some uh, green gold and things on my palette as well from the previous painting that I was doing earlier on in uh, the day as well. Generally when I'm doing these sorts of things I often um, paint the skyline all the way down to the bottom because uh, often when I'm doing my little daily paintings I tend to paint the foreground a little bit a little bit sketchy and a little bit rough which means that some of the lights from the uh, sky that I was painting show through the foreground as well. Um, I can't remember now off the top of my head if I had uh, a lot of that in this particular one itself and um, just sort of kind of works quite well particularly if you're doing like a, um, a sort of a more silhouette one where there's a lot of uh, black in the foreground if you paint the background really quite thickly and then you're painting your silhouette over the top that actually works quite well um, and here what I'm doing is I'm just throwing in a few colors in the sky and having a little bit of a play and uh, seeing exactly um, exactly what I want the colors to be and where our Australian skies here can be a little bit dramatic so there's often just amazing 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 colors in it and really I was just having a little bit of play with some of those colors we get such bright oranges and yellows and you know pinks and blues all in the same sky with patches of you know darkness and then it can be yeah just very very dramatic the biggest thing with this is that you don't mix down your blues into your yellows otherwise you end up with green um, and if you're going to have blue underneath a sky that has um, yellows in it which you, you can very definitely do you need to paint your blue first and then uh, wait for that to dry and then go over the top of it again with your like a color that's got yellow in it or you just have to be very careful it's very easy to turn your sky into a, a green muddy mess if you're going to be mixing blues and yellows or make sure your brush is clean and in this particular case that there's sort of red in between where you're putting your yellows and where you're going to be putting your um, putting your blues Now sometimes I, um, I do these a little bit differently, but in this particular case, I just put little splotches of color down and went from there. There are plenty of other methods. You can put great big, big splots on the paper and then sort of blend them around with a really big brush. Um, sometimes I do that. And in this particular case, I just chose a little small, um, a small brush. It's not a square brush. It's one of the ones that looks a little bit oval on the, um, oval on the top. And I find they're really good for these sorts of things where you don't want really, really sharp edges, but you still want a little bit of, um, still want a little bit of detail. Um, I particularly do this for a lot of the Australian skylines where I want little patches and, you know, weird colors and things showing through. And I kind of want to do this in a hurry. I'm getting better at these. Um, <laughs> Compared to some of the early ones, like I'll put one up like this. <laughs> um, this was maybe one of the first ones I did since I started um, back painting and, you know, broke every rule that there wasn't with skies. I put grey over the top. I guess pretend I was pretending to try and do smoke. I really wasn't. I had no clue what I was doing. Um, my previous, uh, you know, painting experience was with uh, oil paints. I painted on wood panels and um, I used a lot of glazing oils so I would do like a really tonal um, underpainting in, in uh, raw umber or uh, sienna those sorts of colors and then um, sort of thin glazes of paint and oil over the top just to build up the color over the top and then the the darks and lights show through with the um, 
with the thin layers of transparent oil color over the top of them and you end up with this really you know sort of uh, more in-depth more in-depth painting um, the entire base has sort of got like a, a color that kind of it doesn't show through but it does unite the whole painting it's it, I love doing it like that apart from the fact it gets your tones down your darks and lights in the right spot um, yeah which obviously I don't do when I'm doing anything like this so I mean acrylics are new for me which is why um, I've been doing these little wee doing these little wee studies and things you know sort of just trying to paint every single day get something down on the canvas because um, I'm I'm really bad for not finishing paintings and I have all these amazing big oil paintings that I just haven't finished because you know they're my best effort and um, yeah so um, it's kind of a good thing for me doing these little paintings because it's sort of teaching me just to write 30 minutes, whatever I can get done. And I can just say, ah, it was only 30 minutes. So there we are. Um, but I am getting quicker. There were a few, you know, um, that I sort of let go past that and end up sort of about an hour, 20 or so. Um, well, that's okay. But the whole point is they're not supposed to take days. The only one that really has taken days is one of the ones I posted. Um, I think it was about a week or a week and a half or so ago. Um, that little sort of scene where I threw it on the floor for two weeks because I was just so disgusted with it. it just turned into this great big disgusting mighty mess. And I'm like, ugh, that is the most revolting thing I've ever done. And then I picked it up and was like, oh, you know, I want to deal with that. So we're just going to let that dry. I think I actually took it out the back and hair dried it. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going back through and now it's dry um, just with a round um, a round pointy brush there just fixing up little bits I'm um, not putting too much paint uh, sort of kind of all over it just sort of gently sort of blending it in if you put too much over the top of this it really just turns into sort of a muddy mess so put a little bit down and just sort of wiggle it around um, don't don't rub it don't run it too far too far around um, I just wasn't quite happy with the way this little bit was 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 going, but um, I couldn't quite figure out exactly what I wanted to do um, with this wee bit. But that's okay. This really was one of the <laughs> the, the quicker ones. Um, I think I've sped this up sort of one and a one point two five uh, for the video, and I think even then it's still only like you know twenty twenty minutes thirty minutes or so. So it wasn't really very long. And at that point, I'm like, oh, I've got a little bit of blue up here. I hope it's dry. You can see just that slight greeny sort of kind of <laughs> tin sticking through there. And I'm like, oh. I mean, that's okay. Sometimes you do end up with um, sort of a little bit of, you know, a green tinge to the sky. But you certainly don't end up with leaf green in there. So you've got to be careful. And I spend a little bit of time here just fussing around, sort of trying to figure out exactly what I want and where I want. You've got to be careful sometimes adding in the wide. It depends on, you know, what you're, um, you know, what you're going for. Yeah, but I love, um, you know, I love looking at what other people do with their, you know, like daily paintings and things. So if you're a, you know, a daily, daily paint artist sort of kind of fan and these are the sorts of things that you do for, um, you know, training, well, not training purposes because this isn't like, you know, going through and learning stuff. This is just getting paint on it, on a, you know, on the canvas, which just trying to deal with my little mental block of, um, you know, best efforts and things like that. I don't like that. So I'm just trying to. I'm never really happy, you know, there's always something that I would want to change or or, or rather I want to leave it because I don't want to spoil it or whatever it is. So it's all just about, this is all for me, it's just a mental block thing. Do you guys get that? You know, just where you just don't want to, don't want to finish something because, you know, it means that's as good as you can do and then you're upset by that, particularly at the moment because I'm back relearning how to <laughs> relearning how to paint. I had some really nice stuff back, you know, 10 years ago before children. And then I stopped painting and obviously changed medium um, as well. So I can't do my big oil paintings, um, A, in this particular studio that I've got in the back. It's in the back bedroom. I have the whole back bedroom, but I share it with my um, fabric and sewing little wee hobbies as well. So it makes it a little bit a little bit tricky. As you can see, there are little baby food jars for my water jars. They're quite handy. Um, Particularly if I need to take my paints anyway, because I can just screw a little bit back on top of them. <laughs> and you can see there one of my brushes that I made um, on the 
um, the most left hand brush there. It's got the wrap twine around the um, the um, handle of the brush. I'm just using a fan brush. Um, little trick with these ones, something that I struggle with, they need to be dry. If the brushes are really sloppy and your paint's really liquidy and watery, you're not going to end up with the um, the bristles forming sort of leaves. You're going to end up with clumpy, blobby bits. Yeah. Ah, yes, I did have leaf, leaf spots in the foreground here for the, the, the lights coming through. Um, you can see there, it kind of looks a little bit like the, and the light from the sky is kind of shining down onto you know reflecting off the um off the ground is you know sometimes it does um maybe there was water down there or you know whatever it was um i don't think i was planning that i think that was just supposed to be ground or whatever it is um same with that bristle brush there you know if you have it really too sloppy and too wet it makes a muddy mess and sometimes if i've washed them and then i don't dry them properly then i end up with a muddy mess and i get really frustrated but i can't i'm having real difficulties um finding some the brushes that I really like for these. A lot of the fan brushes around have been too soft and um, I don't know, maybe I just need to leave them caked in paint for a week or two and, you know, let them, I don't know, leave them out in the sun or something and make them really nasty. It's one of the benefits and also disadvantages of using the um, Atelier paints. They wash out really easily. Um, if you leave your brushes for a couple of days, um, they're fine. You just give them a wash any of the other paints and you sit there and you try and pick it off your brushes and it's painful um, yeah. and then what I'm doing there is just a good old daily painting trick of starting with the background with the darks and then um, just dabbing in some of the the yellow there um, not too much because I don't want it to be too too bright um, the other way you can do that is you can start with a really light desaturated color in the background and then get darker in the front as well like that you know that looks quite that can look quite good um, yeah and I'm just just having a little bit of a play this wasn't um, the foreground really wasn't what this painting was going to be about it's more about the um, about the sky and I just wanted to get down whatever I could get done in 30 minutes I had timeline I had my child asleep and I'm like right gotta go She's been homesick with bugs, and I'm like, oh, this day and age, daycare, do not let them there if they're not very well, and they just keep sending her home. Yeah, so when I leave those brushes in the water like that, I end up with a sloppy, yucky, mucky mess on those brushes. It's painful. I have to dry them. And then I'm just using a um, just a normal pen there. It works a little bit better if your paint is not quite so dry. Um, just, to scratch in the, just to scratch in the branches. Uh, you know Australia there's lots of different you know color trees and some of our trees have got really silvery um, uh, silvery trunks and some have got really dark ones so often um, you've got two options I guess with your tree trunks versus your leaves you can make your trunks really dark and your leaves lighter or you know whatever or you could make them um, sort of lighter and catching catching the light of the Sun or whatever it might happen to be I choose that one because it's quick and easy that works really well. Um, it's good to mix them around as well, so you can do some scratched out and then some with the, um, uh, yeah. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, blocking in some uh, little hot air balloons. It's a bit of a popular theme at the moment around the daily painting sort of channels and things to do uh, little little balloons in the sky. Um, now I'm using, it's just straight black and um, I, I didn't want to add any white to it because the black itself is that little bit more transparent, you know, than adding in like white. I know that sounds weird, but it is. Um, and I'm just mixed it with a little bit of that uh, Atelier painting. Was it painting medium or yeah, which whichever one it was, um, just to make the, the paint run that little bit smoother. And I'm also not, because I painted the sky, um, in the background, you can just see that the, the black is kind of tinted by that red, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. Um, and then I'm just trying to get the shape quite right. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing, to be fair. I was on my phone at the time and um, didn't quite get the, the shape exactly what I was wanting. 
or rather I kind of had an idea in my head and I hadn't actually practiced a shape to be fair I was just kind of like painting it through and then you can kind of just just sort of see that there's little bits of what looks like red and yellow kind of coming through particularly um, actually in the actual painting you can see that and then I'm just going back through um, in a minute and actually popping in some of those um, some of those colors I do use a little bit of white and then a little bit of the the colors that were in the sky to sort of reflect reflect against that <clears throat> I actually really have been enjoying doing these sort of like sort of silhouette kind of paintings um, because you can slowly, a bit like my, um, you know, underpainting sort of techniques from, you know, oils is that you kind of start with the darks, but then you kind of add in those little bits of, you know, colors over the top of them. So, you know, there's one way where it's just straight black and you're just doing a straight shape, um, which is fine. Um, I actually don't like that quite as much. You have to be really careful with how you draw your shape to make sure that's perfect. Um, and then, you know, if you're starting to add in those little bits of colours, it can look quite cool. So, um, I don't know, the, the next one I, or the one I did, the video I'll be posting, I think after this one was a dancer, um, which was a silhouette. And she was supposed to just be plain black, but I ended up sort of kind of just giving a little bit of form, you know, a little bit of shape by just adding in some little bits of, you know, um, uh, shadows and lights and things on the contours. And um, yeah, it came out actually really quite well for the 30, 40 minutes or so that it took me to do it. And then I'm just sort of planning on where I'm going to put my next one. You can see I put the little basket in there. I perhaps didn't leave quite as much room between them as I was intending. And I made sure to do a little bit more in this one. It's the only thing with this when you're sort of kind of painting over the top. Um, you know, you have to, you don't really have too many goes at what you're doing before it turns into a muddy mess. And you have to repaint the sky behind it, which is fine. But, you know, it means drying time and then your 30, 40 minutes kind of goes out the window. So, um, yeah, a lot of those sort of silhouette kind of techniques have to be, um, yeah, if you don't want to have to put, put back in your, you know, background or your foreground or whatever it might happen to be, um, kind of have to get it right first time. Although, with the Italian interactive paints, if you use a really clean brush, just dipped in a tiny little bit of water, you can just sort of nudge the paint down. Um, it's really, really reactive with the water. It also means that if you've uh, let a paint layer to dry and you're painting over the top of it and you're really scrubbing in with your brush, you'll reactivate the paint underneath, which isn't necessarily always, um, always what you want, um, but it's quite handy. Um, you can lock it, but there's a, there's a special, um, another special formula that you can lock the paint with. Um, so to stop that from, stop that from happening, stop that paint from reactivating, but it's really good. So it's a little bit more like the oils, I guess, than, um, uh, you know, most acrylic colors. Once it's dry, that ain't moving. Um, whereas with the interactive paints, you've kind of got a little bit of time and I like the mediums. I can kind of play around with it a little bit. It's good. And I quite like that. Yeah, so I've left, I know, okay, so maybe it's like one mil more <laughs> in between uh, that one and that one. And just, it's a little bit difficult to see on the video. In the actual painting, you can kind of see those little flecks that little bit better. Um, just trying to get that through. Just want little bits of lights, and as you can see, it's kind of like the lights in the middle the lights in the middle of the painting rather than um, you know like all being on the left hand or the right hand side or whatever it might be so it's the balloon on the left has the lights on the right and the balloon on the right has the lights on the left and then I'm just putting in the ropes that really should have gone on the, that one there <laughs> And I actually don't normally paint, I don't normally paint these on top of my pouring paint puppy pee pads. <laughs> normally I have the slate that's underneath there. Um, one of our, old, one of our, you know, like our big tiles that we used when we were redecorating um, rather than the, the puppy pee pads. But they're very handy for wiping brushes on. And um, I, yeah, 
just looks a bit messy in there today. I guess that's maybe a good thing that you can't see the rest of the studio. <laughs> it was frightful that day. It was hideous. I have sort of kind of tidied it up a little bit. I kind of run in two modes. I either run in, um, you know, like I've cleaned my kitchen bench six times today. And I like having my kitchen bench clean, to be fair, though. Um, or I run in, let's just wallow in the mess. I don't like filth, you know, like dirt. But, you know, just having mess everywhere. You know, like, anyway, I don't know. I get, I get the, I crack the, you know. I get really quite annoyed with that and then just end up on this massive cleaning spree. That's time. But it's a bit difficult. I've got all my um, all my art stuff and all my sewing stuff with not amazing storage in here. Well, not like specifically design storage. I've kind of got, we've got plans to sort of redo down in here. I need to redo my lighting and the filming sort of kind of side of things at the moment. My camera rig is less than ideal. It's just propped up with a piece of wood with my camera, because um, it's the GoPro like, rather than like a big DSLR, um, which I have, but I can't manage to rig that properly yet because it's too heavy. Um, this is sort of propped up on a piece of wood with sticky tape. Super high tech. Yeah, super high tech. <laughs> but we'll get there. It's just a, you know, we're still redoing the kitchen and there's just other things that we're doing at the moment and oopsies. Okay, apparently I can't scroll through while I am doing the voiceover. <laughs> it's not gonna let me. Um, yeah, so just adding in just a few extra little wee um, lights and things through there. Like I said, it's sort of a silhouette with just little bits of sort of added light colors. A lot of these you know, are just plain, just flat shapes, which is great, but it's not, um, yeah, it's nice kind of being able to do this. It's just a little bit like that sort of underpainting and just adding in the sort of, you know, the colour or the lights, I guess, kind of over the top of it. And that's quite cool. Anyway, we're nearly done. It was just a quick little 30-minute um, painting. <coughs> just fussing about because I was thinking about the photos and then didn't take them anyway. <laughs> and that's sort of what I've been working on. Uh, there's a little one on the left hand side there that really annoyed me and there's my current that the house painting is probably my favorite one that I've done in the last month or so I really liked that and there we go that's it so anyway thanks for watching and um hopefully we'll see you in the next video bye